So here is the upper tunnel to the Loomis mine. And uh, this, I believe this was the first tunnel dug here. The lower tunnel that I was at a couple months ago was dug at a later date. I think this was dug in, I wanna say 1881, but I'll put a caption in to verify that. And I think the lower tunnel was dug in 1886. But this mine was only, uh, as far as I know, operated till about 1895 or so. And then uh, that was it. So it used to be a, a gate here. And uh, now this tunnel doesn't have any airflow coming out of it like the, the, the lower tunnel does. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, not a lot of clearance here. It's less than six feet tall, this tunnel. Okay, I can stand up, I can stand up here. Okay, so looking up here, looks like there are some gated off inclined shafts um, coming down from the outside. So those just must be around the corner from the portal where I just entered. And uh, that's all filled in there. So we're approaching a big stope here. And uh, a big, a big boulder, a big collapse, maybe, probably. Well, here in this stope, there's more daylight right there. So now this opening would have been as I was hiking up here, but I didn't see anything for some reason. Uh, well, maybe it looks like it's higher than the portal. That's why. Oh yeah, that's higher than the portal. That's also fenced off with very flimsy chain link, uh, chain link fencing. Um, yeah, the stacked rock here, that's gobbing. And again, that just comes down here into the stove. So yeah, kind of a big stope that's on a slant. Looks like there might be a, a drift tunnel that way, but we'll go back into where we, where we entered. You can see the daylight shining in there from the, the portal we came in. It's kind of cool. So it looks like the drift level continues that way. And over here, it looks like there is, uh, I think, ore cart tracks. Well, yeah, what's left of them. You remember um, in part one and two, I pointed out how they used wooden cross ties with notches for the ore cart rails, which were just pieces of lumber with metal strapping on top. I had never seen that in an abandoned mine before. Wooden uh, cross ties that were notched. So you can see the tracks here going off in front of me. And look at that, massive retaining wall. And it goes all the way up there. Some support timbers, and that's where we came in. So basically this would be what would be the uh, first drift level um, in this stope. And you can see it kind of goes down there. I'm not sure how far down it goes, but I do believe this upper tunnel is connected to the lower tunnel we were in a, a couple months ago. There probably is a connection point, but I'm still not really feeling any airflow coming through this tunnel, so I don't know. So maybe a little bit of airflow. Check this out, got a little bat who is awake. Oh, there he goes.
So we're just kind of winding around here. Another retaining wall. We saw these on the lower level, exact same construction. Wow, that goes all the way down there. Continuing down through this drift level, here is a gap in the uh, support timbers, and I can see up there, way up there, wow, uh, let me see if I can zoom in there, you can see daylight, see that, that is way up there, so that means there's uh, probably more stopes off both sides of this tunnel coming down here through this gap. Uh, you'd have to climb up in there and just check it all out. Um, but yeah, there's the daylight. And then it looks like there's some stuff here. Some artifacts. Got some bats flying around. One thing about the bats is uh, you know the oxygen level is sufficient. If it can support the bats, then it can support human life. So when you see bats, that's a good sign. Okay, now this here, I'm not sure what this is. This might go down to the lower level that we were in. I bet it does. Look at that, it's a chute. And uh, wow, it looks like it drops off down there. That has to go to the second level. Not sure what this was. It's got timbers on the bottom. I don't think that was a skip car. Maybe just part of the chute. But look, there's notches where the ore cart tracks would have been. So this was repurposed for something. They used the cross ties and made some kind of a chute or a sled. And that's where we just came from. Well, let's keep going down the drift tunnel. Continues this way. That's it. That's the face. Wow. In terms of tunneling, this upper level was not as extensive as the lower tunnel was. I got through this in about less than 10 minutes. Probably less than five. That's interesting. Well, we'll go back here to this inclined chute. right here. So here's looking down this chute. I'm going to toss a rock down there and see, see what we can hear. Well, it sounds like there's more wood down there, but it sounds like it stopped. I do know, uh, that guy, Roger, that I told you about in the first video, who's been all through this mine and knows it pretty well, said that this upper tunnel, he said up here, there are some shafts that go way down. He said, this might be one of them. Um, you would think it would connect up with the lower tunnel that I was in uh, last time I was here, but maybe they don't. This just might keep going down pretty far and doesn't even intersect the lower tunnel. I guess that's a possibility. 
you know, I would scoot down there to the edge and take a look, but I just don't want to, I don't trust this wood and, uh, God forbid the whole thing gives way and breaks and I go tumbling down there. I suppose I could go on the side. Okay, that's looking up at the top of the chute. And I noticed the chute here has wooden sides, but it's got metal plating on the base of it. So you're never gonna guess what happened. I was looking down here and <laughs> One of the lights on my helmet came off. It fell off and slid down. It slid down the chute here, it fell off the edge, and went all the way down there. You can see it down there, still turned on. Um, I can't believe that happened. Let me get a closer look here. Yep, there's my light. Um, you can see it right there. Right below the chute here where it drops off, there's a steeply angled wooden chute um, that leads into that shaft. And at the very bottom, it looks like there's a wooden frame, might be an ore chute leading to the second, uh, this, uh, uh, the lower level. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, there's my light. Well, I'm not too worried about that light because I think if we go back to where we were, I think there are lower drift levels in this stope that might come out to where my light is. At least that's what I'm hoping. So back at the portal, there was a, uh, looked like a tunnel that was lower than this one cutting through the stope. So I'm hoping that cuts across and uh, it takes me right to my light. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it up here and not worry about it because I'm not going down that shaft. So I'll make my way back to the portal and hopefully I'll be able to find a lower drift level that will take me right to my light. So yeah, this wasn't very extensive, at least this, this particular level compared to that lower level um, or the lower tunnel. There's the portal. Yeah, I think that lower tunnel here, this lower drift level was right here by this other entrance. Um, when I came here the first time, about 20 minutes ago, a bat flew, a bat was here and flew, uh, it flew down that way. So I think that's the next drift level. So I'm gonna scoot down there and see if that cuts across and takes me to my flashlight. Okay, so this is the uh, lower drift level, which I'm hoping takes me to my flashlight. I really hadn't planned on coming into this stope, but because I lost my flashlight down, down that incline shaft, I'm, I kind of have to. Um, so, big support timber there. You can see here the ceiling, how smooth that is. Jeez, this is getting a little, getting a little sketchy, but I think it'll be, a, it'll be worth it if it takes me to my flashlight. Looks like the tunnel keeps going there, maybe. Okay, just came down through this little opening right here, making my way down to a lower level in the stope, which is behind me. This way, I think, past that, past that timber there. Yeah, I really, really hadn't planned on coming down in here like this, but... Okay, not sure what's around this corner. Oh, jeez. Wow, that just keeps going. It looks like it gets kind of steep. I don't see any drift levels off to the left, like I was hoping. It would take me to my flashlight. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go down here just a little bit. This is, uh... It's pretty...
pretty smooth rock. There's no rubble, so it shouldn't be too hard getting back up. Um, that's, that's what I'm always worried about. It's easy to go down these things, but if there's a lot of rubble and it's steep enough, it's really difficult to get back up. Just kicked a rock there. Right there. So what you're seeing here on the right is just support timbering holding back all this waste rock. Boy, if those had ever let go, they'd all go falling down there. Well, that goes way down there. I can see what looks like might be the bottom. But uh, I don't know, I see a timber way down there. Let me zoom in so you can see it. I think I gotta turn my light up. Yeah, see that timber there? I think that's a timber. Okay, I've come down a little further in this steeply inclined shaft and right there in front of me, down there, you can see a pillar. The miners left a, a pillar of uh, rock there. They do that for support. They call it the Ruman pillar method of mining. They'll leave a bunch of pillars equally spaced apart to help support the uh, overhead. But this shaft I'm in, looks like it goes off there to the uh, left of that pillar. You can see some, um, some timbers there where it continues down. Looks like it kind of bends a little to the left and keeps going. Uh, this is getting a little too steep and there's there's a lot of rubble. I'm already slipping. So I would have a hard time getting back up that if I went down all the way. And I don't know if it comes out to the lower tunnel or not. If it did, I might do it, but still that's, that's really steep. And if all these rocks let go, it just isn't worth it. So yeah, I don't think there's a drift levels off to the left that lead over to that other uh, shaft with the chute in it where my light is. So my flashlight is that fell off my helmet. So I think I'm going to turn around and uh, just leave that light there. I think, I think the battery will last probably for about six hours and then it'll just burn out. Um, if I get back here in the future with some other people and we have a rope, maybe we can check out some of these lower levels. I do know Roger said that these go way down. So I, I don't think these intersect the lower tunnel at all. I think that was a separate little uh, endeavor. Um, because that, uh, if you saw those videos, that lower tunnel had its own incline shaft that went down three levels. So I don't think anything connects up really. Um, this was a separate mine, and he said that he said those go way, way down, and it certainly looks like it. I am having a heck of a time getting back up this inclined little shaft here. Uh, that's why I didn't want to go down the whole way because it gets even steeper and. Um, that would have been a death sentence, I think. Um, there's some rubble here that I'm kind of slipping and sliding on. So, yeah, this uh, I'm glad I stopped when I did and turned around. Just got to get back up there to where that big timber is. That's the drift level. Well, making our way back out. Trying to get back up to the main level in this stope. It's right up here. Through that tunnel there to the right. That's where we're headed. That's the exit. Let's go check out the uh, dynamite storage locker. That's a little bit lower on the mountainside. Okay, right here you see an entrance, a heavily timbered entrance to what looks like a dynamite storage locker. Um, I say that because it looks like there's a pipe there in the, in, the, in the ceiling coming down. That was probably a vent pipe. I've seen other dynamite storage lockers that have uh, something similar. You can see it there, um, but you can see how heavily timbered it is right there on the right-hand side. And uh, they put a bunch of uh, rocks here on, on top as well. So it was pretty fortified, being that it was a, a place to store explosives. Uh, let's go in here and check this out. Now, here's, here's part of uh, the door that was on here. Um, most of it has been broken off, but this section here that the hinge was attached to is still in place. 
So yeah, they probably had a lock over here and then uh, kept the dynamite stored in here. So here is the interior of this dynamite storage locker. And that's as far as they went. It doesn't go anywhere. So here's what it looks like looking towards the entrance. I noticed over here though behind the door is another section of pipe. Looks like that was going to the outside maybe. See it comes up there and sort of bends that way towards the behind the door. So I don't know. Maybe they had cross ventilation in here. But yeah, you can see here on the timbering. Oh, it's better from the other side. Let me show you from the other side. Okay, so see these support timbers? You can see how how they uh, put a notch in the cross piece there so that the support piece could kind of lock into it for support. And uh, they did that on both sides, basically. You can see it over there as well. They notched the cross timber and uh, stuck the support timber, the vertical support timber, right up into it, kind of like a neat little fit. So these have been here since the late 1880s. And uh, this was dynamite storage.